introduction to add a Retrium Strategies and Treaties, or Trium s &T. By me, Dashwell 9. Trium is a universal tabletop wargame RPG that allows you to play where and how you want. In any setting, all you need, all you need to do is make gear and abilities. Although you won't need to, as I am making many editions, each with a setting or sandbox for you to play in. Which, you only need one of them to play as they are all all-in-one rulebooks, or just get the cool rulebook if you just want to play and make your own setting or sandbox. I made Trium to open up tabletop gaming to people who would not traditionally play these games, as they find them too hard to understand or play due to the math and reading typically involved. So I came up with a rather unique system for, the ta for a tabletop game called the AP system. This system allows for any setting to be built upon it as gear and abilities interact with the AP system, but the AP system does not interact back. So let's begin explaining the gameplay. Firstly, this is the character sheet used in the RPG. And this is the P sheet used in the war game. The P sheet is the most basic form of character sheet in uh, in Ad in Retreatum, where it only shows your gear or equipment, uh, mainly what you have equipped, and your race or nationality in other uh, in other editions of this game, mostly modern and near future. What magician type you are, if magic is in your game, if you're using the magic system, and what's most important of all is your armor, your health, and your AP stats, as well as a cheat sheet for your for your uh, for your weapons, your gear, and your abilities. Well, your what weapons slash gear and your this equipment we should also slash your gear and your abilities. The character sheet um, is mainly for RPG play, although if you have a character in the war game, as in you want to take a character you made using this sheet and put it into the war game, or use a pre-made character as a more powerful unit in your war game as a, at a higher cost, you can do that. Um, it has, again, the same basic information such as your um, equipped items and what items you're carrying. Um, as well as your full dis the full description of your race or nationality, um, or birth nation, and then stuff related to magic, as well as your special training specializations, which influence gameplay. By uh, which influenced RPG, these could be considered like per perks or talents. Where if you have special training vehicles, that means you can drive vehicles or land vehicles. Where if you have special training uh, land vehicles, you can drive vehicles. If you, have, if you have a specialization of a doctor, that means you get, which means you get higher, which means you get, roll more dice on, uh, on, uh, healing rolls, and you start, and you get abilities bundled in with gaining doctor specialization, with gaining doctor special, specialization. You also have your traits, or your attributes, um, uh, which are, your, which which is what you use to define your character in the game in, in the game itself such as if you have more tactics than everyone else you are really a tactician if you have more power than anyone else you can punch things really hard and so and so on if you can talk you're really cr you're uh, if you can talk uh, if you um, if you have a lot of points in talk you can really talk to someone and basically are pretty good are pretty good leader who is not good at tactics and so forth um, you also have your levels and ranks. There are ten levels in each rank, and I mean there are ten ranks in each level, which are earned by experience. Experience is also what you use to buy your abilities and weapons. There is only one currency in Abitreatum, and that is experience. Experience is used for not only gaining up in ranks, but it's also used for it's also used for buying pretty much everything. You also got lives if you want them. Lives allow new players to get used to how lethal the game can be for those unprepared. But if your strategies are good and you make a treaty, then you want to need your you want to need your life. When starting from the arrangement area, you first look at the P sheet and character sheet to see 
how many APs a piece you want to move as. Which for us, as we don't have cards, we have, uh, where is it? Ah, uh, where, mystical, mystical thing. Yeah, why, why you always do basic things, that's why. Um, but anyway, so, you can find the pre-made pieces near the, at the very bottom of the all-in-one guide. As you can see, so I can just uh, constantly add more. But anyway, so the Ultra Royal Infantry has 10 AP, which he is represented by the, uh, he is representing the Sapphire Kingdom in the blue uh, region area. And his opponent for today is a Ruby Kingdom basic archer with how many how many AP do we have? We look at either our card or we look at the rule book. Um, which the rule book is not going to have all of the pieces all the pieces in the game. Pieces are basic or your basic units. Um, they're not going to have all the pieces in, in the game. However, there's going to be more. Uh, ex there's going to be expansions, which going to, which are going to add more pieces. Um, and there are other rule books with different types of eras. For example, there's the near future. Uh, I'm working on a near future rule book, which has the dur which has dur story units in it, and there's going to be a near near future modern and uh, a near a near future science fiction and modern version of the sandbox ru rule book as well. This is the fantasy. This is the historical fantasy and steampunk rule book. But here's the basic archer. They have eight AP. The reason is the Sapphire Kingdom, the Sapphire Kingdom Ultra Royal Infantry is not wearing any armor. So he has full 10 AP, as it, as he is no armor wearing him down. So he has no um, he is no armor augmenting his ability, which in the near future, it's usually armor that augments abilities, augment, augments that augments what you can do in a turn or what you can do in your turn, which is AP. Whereas the Ruby Kingdom Archer, basic archer, has cloth armor, which weighs him down some. So in total, he has 8 AP to work with. So we're going to move up our Ultra Light Infantry uh, using, uh, we want to move up our Ultra Light Infantry 10 spaces using our 10 AP. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we take away that 10 AP. And we end our turn. Now, if you're not playing on Rule Twenty, you can mark it on your piece. Uh, you can mark it on your piece sheet, or use a D10, or you use a percentage dice and roll the numbers down as you use AP, as you want to tr keep track of it. And your opponent, the other player, would probably want you to keep track of it as well. So a sheet would look more or less like this. I do plan on making a better version of this. Once I actually get time to, and once I finalize the design, as we're only in alpha, uh, alpha is not beta, and beta is not release. I'm planning to, uh, I'm planning to uh, make more finalized designs going on to the beta, and probably a little after the beta, um, as you should. Betas are mostly finished; they're just needing some fixes, whereas alphas are mostly unfinished. And pre-alphas, which the game was in before are definitely unfinished we're just slapping things and trying to get them together but anyway so we can mark it down on a character sheet that we spent zero, uh that we moved 10 times and spent zero ap or we can use a d10 and mark it down that way or have tokens or however you want to keep track of it but for right now since we're playing rule 20 i just minus it on the character sheet Each space is one. Uh, each space is three feet. Uh, is three feet in theater to the mines, or one inch or one centimeter if you're using a table with mi with miniatures. Um, you can use theater to the mine for the war game, but you would need to have a either a referee. Uh, well, you would need to have a ref referee slash GM to basically make the environment for the two players to play. This was done back in the old times 
um, with the very first war games to ever be developed. Um, maybe we can do the same system with uh, uh, with Abbey Freedom if that might be interesting. We are also playing on Roll Twenty, a virtual tabletop, as I have limited ability to make IRL tabletop videos, so I decided to use this one as it's free with, with subscription. It's easily available to, available to everyone, and it's extremely easy to use. So in future videos, maybe for the beta, maybe for full release, I'll be making... Maybe I'll make videos not using Rule 20, not using this setup, but we'll see. And I'll definitely make add-on videos, or videos in the series using Tabletop Simulator and other, and other methods to show you how the game is played. Also, if we ended with one extra AP, it would not carry over. So you can never have, so if your piece only has 10 AP, you can never have 11 um, or so forth. So there's no reason to not spend all of your AP as it refills next turn always. Unless, there's, unless I make an ability that you, you, that the opponent can use to stop that, but regardless. Now I want to do the same with the basic archer, as it's now, as it's now Ruby Kingdom turn one, as Sapphire Kingdom turn one just ended. We want to move up one, two, three, four, five, six spaces, marking that down on how we're marking it. And now we want to, now we want to be in range of that, uh, and now we want because. We want to be just in range of that, of that ultra of the, of the Sapphire Kingdom Ultralight Infantry, which we are, as the range of the longbow is 15 meters, or well, 15 each each uh, each base is a meter or three feet, um, which I have I have, which it should be over a hundred, but I'm still thinking about whether or not I want to keep how I actually wrote it down for this. Um, which, 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 let's show his character sheet. Right there. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think I made it realistic, so. Regardless. So now, uh, he is, but unfortunately, his longbow takes 6 AP, so he no long, uh, so he cannot fire, so he cannot shoot it, so he's gonna end his turn. So this is end of Sapphire, this is end of Ruby Kingdom, turn 1. And end of round one, as both as both players has got uh, have completed their have spent all the AP on their on their pieces or have forfeit the AP on their pieces, allowing the round to end. If you are playing with more than two people, um, as in if there were, as in if there were uh, other players on the other borders on the other map borders, then you would um, then you would. Uh, then the round would end when their turn, when all their turns went. So yeah. Okay, so you now reset all of. The why you do this to me? Oh, that, right. That off like gone. Never mind. No, why you do this? Oh. Yeah, rule 20 can be... It's easier to... Trust me, it's easier to use than everything else. This is it being easier to use. But anyway, so you want to... Um, so you want to reset all the, all the pieces on your team's AP. Again, never going over their cap. Uh, which for the archer's case is 8. And now we want to look over on the core moves, which is the only, sh which, okay, basically the only piece of paper you need to play the game is the core moves to know what you can do in the AP system and the piece sheet or character sheet. You don't need any other pieces of paper for, for your, for what, for you as a player. If you're, you know, playing, if you, if you're making a game for other, if you're, hosting a game for other people then you would need what they would need to play as players too so that you would need the piece sheets or character sheets of their characters and pieces and yours and 
and what have you. The, Sa uh, the Sapphire Kingdom Ultralight Infantry will now enter stealth for uh, 2 AP as, as the first move of their turn. This will allow them to not to, this will force the, this will force all the pieces on the, on, this will force all the pieces on the opposing team, the Ruby Kingdom, to the, to use the tech in order to, in order to sense, in order to, well, see them, or hear them, or whatever, in order to attack them. So, the blue, and uh, now the blue kingdom, and uh, now the blue, and yeah, now the sapphire kingdom, Ultra Light Infantry will move up as far as it can go, taking note that while no movement is only 1 AP, if you're using stealth, um, if you're in stealth, if you're in a stealth, it costs 1 more AP to make it 2 AP. So, 2, 4, 6, 8. And that's in, and that ends Blue Sapphire's turn, which Ruby King, which Ruby Kingdom now it's Ruby Kingdom turn two, as as uh, Sapphire Kingdom turn one or turn turn two just ended. Ruby the Ruby Kingdom uh, the Ruby Kingdom piece the Ruby Kingdom basic archer will now uh, actually let's reset their thing. Will now use uh, will now shoot with their bow, which let's look back down at the thing. Look back down at the piece sheet. With the basic archer, it is roll. Oh, actually, I have the tech first. So let's roll three d six. I believe it is. And remember, six, uh, six AP roll D ten. Yeah, of course. Uh, or hit on two plus, but we'll get to that in a second. We'll get we'll get how to we'll get how we'll we'll get to how to roll uh, roll dice in a second. So, the Ruby Kingdom uh, basic archer will now use detect by rolling three AP and trying to find them on three plus. This is now this is controversial feature of my game. As is a piece of my lot, pieces of this game. Um, that's why I'm making a video to explain it. But the controversial bit is, it's odd to see bracketing and basically defining what is a what type of role is at a glance in a rule book. I prefer it this way, so like I said, you can find it on the glance as opposed to looking at a bunch of numbers and letters and trying to find out which is what. Um, so basically, you know that in the rule book, in the rule book, if it's in one of these, it is a roll. If it's in one of these, it is a it is a uh, it is a CC or character challenge or just challenge. Basically, you need a hit on, and it's always the number. And it's always at least the number, and then it might be plus or minus. So you get the so if you get basically if. I roll three dice and get one success. I mean, roll three dice and I get a three and a one and a two. That means I get one success as I got a three. If I roll the dice again and I have a four, a two, and a one, I get I get it. Um, I they will find they will find the they will find ultra infantry. Be, they will find ultra infantry because four is one plus is one. It's higher. It's one plus higher than a three. So yeah, and also using sensing, if you get one success, you detect the you can detect just the unit for yourself. If you get three successes, you detect them for the entire team, but only for that turn. So let's roll some dice. So advanced dice roller. Six. Roll on three. Plus none. Head on threes, and as you can see, two successes. The one thing I see, but the five and three did. So, the basis of the ultra infantry is now detected. 
Now the archer, now the basic archer will now use their bow or use their longbow for six AP. So they use the tech for one. Now they will use their longbow for six. And the longbow is 10 AP, I mean 10 dice, hitting on two plus. That means that if it's a two or higher, it gets, the, you know, the action succeed. Which in this game, it is very rare for dice to require you to actually add up all of the numbers shown on the dice. For example, this is nine successes as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, well, nine dice uh, as nine succeed. You do not need to add up one, six, 12, 14, 16. You don't need to do that. All you need to do is count what succeeded and leave out all the rest. Unless ability specifically says otherwise, or unless it is specifically specified to do so, just count, just count how you, just count the result of success. All right, now the basic archer will now go into Overwatch, as that's what you can do with three AP. Where in the world is it? Now, I know where it is. It's just I need to find it on the list. We're now going Overwatch for two AP. Overwatch um, is a state in which a unit. Um, in which a unit can fire upon any other unit doing a uh, doing an action or you know doing an uh, you know doing a act or moving into their line of sight only once per, per that unit though so we'll see you next turn so that's end of Ruby Kingdom turn one as he doesn't want to exactly actually hmm actually he's gonna shuffle over here. So we can get line of sight on either side of that tree. Hey, come on. Come on. There we go. And that ends Ruby Kingdom turn one. I mean turn two turn two. Also the end of round also the end of round two. Alright, now let's move on to Ruby Kingdom uh, turn three. If I'm great, hopefully I am. Um, but anyway, so he is going to move up all stealth and under the overwatch of that guy. But he defeats the overwatch because he is stealth. Overwatch cannot be used on a stealth unit. So now he will actually, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ooh, that's not good enough, though. Yeah, that's not good enough. He will have to take an overwatch if he actually moves up that far because taking off stealth is free. He will have to take an overwatch to the face and then he'll be at the mercy of the basic archer all of next turn. But the basic archer will be at mercy of him all of next turn as, or all of next turn as well. So he is gonna, so instead of that, he's going to throw off stealth. He's no longer stealthy. For zero AP, and now he's going to go one, two, three. Whoops. He's going to go one, two, three right there. Actually, equal. Ten minus three. Whoops. Equal ten minus three. He's going to move right there. And he's going to take an overwatch to the face, which is. Oh, and also we need to take off the also we need to take off the health of this guy. I forgot about that. Now arrows on a six or a three sixes or any anything with shot in the fantasy or in fantasy and in fantasy historical or steampunk, well mostly fantasy and historical. Anything with the anything with the world with shot in it for its main for its main move will do full damage to health and armor, but only, uh, but on sixes will penetrate into health, and only that success. So he got in reality, um, 
one, two, three, four, five, six successes. So take off six health and then uh, six armor and then we take off three health. And now the, and now actually, 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 one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That one happened, so he's going to stop up, uh, stop right there. After getting Overwatch, well, yeah, after getting Overwatch, we're going to roll that dice again. Which is eight successes and one six. So he's going to take that right into the shield. Now, if the shield loses all of its armor points, it's still alive. There is no condition for breaking shields or any equipment. So really, seven successes. And one success goes into health. And then he is going to... F Actually, he is going to... What is, he, what is he going to do? What can he do? Hmm... He is going to go, uh, he is going to go into stealth for two and then go into cover for three. And now it's, uh, end of Sapphire turn. Actually, he can do one more thing. Not really, he can. There's nothing he can do other than move. So that, that'll be in. Of the end of Sapphire Kingdom, turn three, and beginning of Ruby Kingdom, turn three. Equal not ten equal eight. So now the now the Ruby Kingdom archer is going to get a shot by moving over here one two, and can he see him from here and still get a shot off? Uh, no, the tree's in the way. So he cannot hit. So he cannot sh uh, fire upon uh, the Sapphire Kingdom. Uh, the Sapphire Kingdom, and also he would need to. Uh, also, he would need to. He would also need to. Sorry, he would also need to. Uh, detect him anyway, so he can't do anything about it, and he's also in cover. He can't do anything about it, so he's going to just end his turn, and then it's begin, and then that's end of round three and beginning of Sapphire Kingdom round, uh, or Sapphire Kingdom turn four. He's going to get his AP back, and then he is going to simply rush him. Actually, can he simply rush him? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nine, ten. Uh, no, he can't simply rush him. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then wrap it up there. So he's gonna drop stealth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, he's gonna go move here and then stealth again. So move eight, and now he's gonna stealth. So he also loses cover as he moves. Cover is only cover stays until you move. So that's end of Sapphire Kingdom, turn four, and beginning of Ruby Kingdom, turn uh, turn four, equal eight. If I put ten on this, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to um, before, but anyway. So he is going to move to the side one two, and he's going to shoot on the uh, he's going to shoot on the Sapphire Kingdom. Uh, Ultra Infantry. Nine successes. Two sixes. So that's in reality a negative seven. And two sixes. So you got negative two. That, that's the end of round four and beginning of round five and turn five for. Uh, Sapphire Kingdom. Now he's just going to rush him. He drops stealth once again. And now is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six to get behind him. 
And then he's going to go into CQB and go in and use the data here. Go into CQB, go into CQB and use uh, and use a backstab. Um, and do a backstab for 10 AP. And then that's for RPG characters. Hit on for the health. It's very devastating if you're lucky, and not very devastating if you're not. Now, daggers can do more, uh, can do the same move, but for more, and, and, I'm trying to remember if Reaper is going or not, but, not, uh, I'll, pro possibly not, so don't take my word on that. But anyway, hit on four plus, what does it get? Five successes. Yes. So now he takes uh, 5 health, and he's using the back, and he's using the CQB command because his sword is only really good for hitting multiple units in the front, uh, supported by friends. And then because that's only 1 AP, which makes it also powerful, well, I mean he can't do anything because he just used 10 AP. So that's going to end his turn. And then we're going to next turn with Ruby Kingdom. Ruby Kingdom is going to turn around and shoot. A, and actually, Ruby Kingdom is going to actually Ruby Kingdom is going to use the exact same thing on him, but with a dagger instead. I don't know why he always does that. So a uh, so a dagger as it's on this unit anyway. Does backstab twenty, hit on uh, hit on tw uh, hit on two, for three AP. So one, two. That looks like the back arc back uh, back uh, back arc to me. These two. Now he's going to. Uh, now he's going to stab in the back for. Now he's going to stub him back with 20 D6. On 2 plus. Basically, don't let anyone with a dagger get behind you. 17 successes. Go straight to the armor. As that's what dagger should do. And then he is going to do it. Actually, it's not negative. 3. And then, and then he's going to do it, do it again. Four. Uh, he's going to do again with the exact same dice roll. Eighteen. Is he still up? Nope, he's done. And that's match. As we were playing Annihilation, Annihilation is destroy. Uh, is destroy all the pieces, and that's that. And that's how you play and retreat them. Uh, now you can now you can get now you can find the game in the description on on uh, green and blues Google Drive and when it releases into version zero uh, version one zero I keep picking it zero one because that's what it's been on uh, this is by the way and this by the way is version uh, the one the one I the one making for this video not necessarily for the cross, not necessarily for the longbow range, but I will have to adjust that later. But anyway, because it probably should be around 100, so they can go have 100 spaces. So balancing. But anyway, again, like this is an alpha, so there are quirks. But this is the 0.2.1 alpha, and um, yeah. So this the rule book will be on Amazon. I'll be self publishing, self publishing through Amazon. I'm not going to have a publisher or anything. Um. I will be making physical stuff for this game, though. It's not all going to be printout stuff. Because the, the game right now is very printout slash play it on Roll20. Um, if you want to play the game in real life right now with these pieces, you can go on the Google Drive and download these pieces and print them out on a piece of paper. That's And, pr and print them out on one piece of paper. I will be having to put these pieces on my Google Drive and um, have a sheet where you can... A sheet with all these... With all the pieces that I have uploaded to Roll20 already um, on it so you could um, 
so you could use that to start playing in real life right now. Just print out the pieces, cu cut out the one inch pieces, and play them on a standard RP on a standard RPG, um, or in, in on a, on a regular grid, or put them on stand so you can uh, play them on. Uh, so you can play them on a on a table. Also, if you want to play on the table, you can always use the miniatures you already have to play the game, or use any bits and bobs you have or anything like that. As, oh, as the only thing you need is a D6 or roll 30 of them. But besides that, you don't. Well, you only you only really need 10. One is too few. T uh, 30 is exactly how many you would need for the later game stuff. But just to start, just to start, you basically need around 10 dice. Uh, 10 dice and the rule book, which rule book can be, like I said, found in the description. The physical version is coming much later when I get version 1 done. And, um, yeah, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Also, if you want to see some gameplay on this, uh, on, uh, on this game as I develop it, you can check out my series on YouTube, which is also in the description of this video. And I might be doing more tutorial videos in the future. Um depending on if I can and if I can master the whole scripted thing, because I basically threw the script out after the first bit, uh, as you can probably tell by the video. Basically, once the combat started going, I threw out the script, because it wasn't going to work anymore. This works in it with this showed the game better, this showed the game off better anyway. So, you can, uh, uh, so I'll be, you can maybe look forward to that, I don't know, no promises. I probably will, though. Uh, I'll show you more advanced stuff, like how, I like how I just thought of something where you can go off the border and come back on the side of the border, don't know if I can, don't know if I'm going to keep that or not, but we'll see. But that will fix the cold camping problem on borders thing. Um, that make the game play much more dynamic, but we'll see about that. But also make the game play longer. Um, so if you're losing, you might want to actually retreat a piece off the board if you like. But anyway, th that's for the future. Alright, so yeah, and, I, and I'll be also making this video as the game develops, of course, so when the video comes out, I'll be making another one, I might be making another one sooner or later, depending on how the game changes, depending on how I view this style, um, how, like, do I want to really update that quickly or stuff like that, but anyway. So yeah, that'd be it for this video, thanks for watching, uh, again, the link's on the description to, uh, to the game and everything, and, um, and yeah, uh, and also, if you want to see, and also, I'll link in the description to my RPG Net forum post, where I'm posting about the development of everything about this game and that, with the patch notes and everything. So, if you want the patch notes, that's where they are. At least for the moment, I might need, I'll need to probably import them to a word, uh, word uh, to a word document and put them on my Google Drive, of course. But anyway, all right. So that'll be it for this. That'll be it for. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for the interest. And shine forward.